Good morning, and welcome to Words That Matter, a modern-day book club. I'm your host, Lee Smith. Uh, we have a, uh, a very special show this morning. Um, uh, uh, the author of a national bestseller now. Uh, the book is The Parent Revolution, Rescuing Your Kids from the Radicals, Ruining Our Schools. The author, he's been with us before, and it's so uh, terrific to have him back, Corey DeAngelis. Corey, welcome. Congratulations. And uh, if you hey, could start, you. By, start by telling us, so your book's a, a national bestseller. Now, to what extent is this riding off of the massive wave created by the, the recent endorsement? from the 45th president of the United States and uh, GOP frontrunner for the 2024 race, Donald J. Trump. I, I saw that on Truth Social and I was thrilled for you. I'm like, yeah, we got him coming on the show. So what happened after that, after he posted it on Truth Social? Yeah, that absolutely helped. I'm truly honored that President Trump endorsed the book and the radical left is losing their minds because they're losing control over the minds of other people's children. I also have an endorsement on the back from Senator Ted Cruz from Texas who says, quote, you can ruin Randy Weingarten's day by reading this book. I actually dedicated it to the teachers unions and Randy Weingarten for overplaying their hand and sparking a parent revolution. It's, it's absolutely glorious. We're winning so much now. I'm almost getting tired of winning. Well, Just well, kidding. We're, we're, we're no, not done yet. So <laughs> we're not I, done I, yet. I'm going to guess that you probably haven't heard from Randy Weingarten. Uh, she's probably not thanking you because, yeah, you, you, you dedicated to her. Uh, and the teachers unions for overplaying their hand. So I'm going to assume that if you've had any response from the teachers unions, uh, from the, what, what will we call it, the educational establishment, they're not entirely happy with the book, with your success. No, they're, they're losing their minds again. There was a, a teachers union boss in Wisconsin actually called to burn the book. Yes, the same yahoos <laughs> who are calling us wow. book banners for wanting age-appropriate content in public school libraries they're actually calling to burn books that they disagree with for adults. So it's Saul Linsky's rules for radicals. Wow. They're doing, accusing everyone else of what they are doing themselves. And actually, Stacey Davis Gates, the Chicago Teachers Union boss, yes, the same union that deleted a tweet saying that the push to reopen schools is rooted in sexism, racism, and misogyny. Their boss, who I just found out recently sent her own kid to private school after calling school choice racist just a year ago. I mean, it's just total hypocrisy. She sent the book back to me. So I don't know if it was above their reading level. I don't know if it was. <laughs> Wait, what, what, uh, they just what do you mean she sent it mistakes. back to you? Had you sent her a they, copy? They sent her a copy. Oh. Again, I thanked her as well for overplaying <laughs> their hand. I mean, they had a, bo a board member during the COVID era vacationing in Puerto Rico, thousands of miles away, while saying they couldn't go back to work because it was too unsafe. It was all a bunch of baloney. I mean, they, they even created an interpretive dance video to so protest going that. back to work. It was pathetic. I right. mean, if you, if you felt sorry for the kids when it came to math and reading scores, you should really feel sorry about the kids who want those extra, extracurriculars because they can't dance either. Corey, I think that one of the reasons that you're having such success and that, and that your, your initiatives, um, what you're promoting are having such success is because you have a good sense of humor and you're enjoying this fight, that you're, 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 you're in there, and you're enjoying it. You like uh, partnering with, with good allies like Donald Trump and you like fighting the right, the, the right adversary. So I think that's a huge part of it. Yeah, and if you look at uh, the elections in Texas that just happened, there was a political earthquake uh, recently where a lot of the anti-school choice incumbents lost their seats for voting against their own party platform issue of education freedom. And school choice has just become a political winner nationwide, too. Look at what happened with Terry McAuliffe in Virginia, the Democrat who said, I don't think parents should be telling schools what they should teach. He lost to Glenn Youngkin, a Republican in a state that apparently went to Biden by 10 points the year before. Glenn Youngkin, the Republican, won on the issue of education. That was the number two issue in that election. And he won with education voters by six points. So it's a blueprint for political success for Republicans. It's also the right thing to do. And if the teachers unions are calling to burn this book, you probably ought to read it. 
But even if you don't have kids, it's called the parent revolution. Even if you don't have grandkids, this is an, an important fight because the radical left doesn't even have to have kids anymore and they can still shape the direction of our country because they can infiltrate the government school system and raise other people's kids in their socialist worldview. And that's a huge problem. Conservatives and independents need to wake up right now and strike at the root of the problem. Vody Bauckham put it best. He said, we cannot continue to send our children to Caesar for their education and be surprised when they come home as Romans. Well, the good news is, Lee, parents aren't surprised anymore. They've woken up. They're never going to unsee what they saw in 2020. And that's why I thank the teachers unions for pushing for school closures, causing Zoom school, which was a failure. But families got to see the indoctrination as opposed to education happening in too many schools today. So that's how the revolution starts, and that's how your book starts. Um, you're talking about the lockdowns. You're talking about what happens with uh, COVID-19 in 2020, and parents are, are alarmed, uh, to, 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 to put it lightly. Um, what's the revolution? What happens? Yeah, so when parents were upset, they started pushing back at school board meetings because that was kind of the the idea, right? The defenders of the status quo said that public schools are accountable because you can show up at school board meetings and they'll listen to you. Well, when you're viewed as a, a, a nuisance and not a customer, when you're not a partner in the relationship, the school boards tried to label parents as domestic terrorists. Yes, the National School Boards Association actually sent a letter to Biden implying that under the Patriot Act, parents should be investigated for domestic terrorism. An earlier draft of their letter actually called for the military and the National Guard to be deployed the school board meetings to clamp down on parents who had the audacity to just want more of a say in their own kids' education. It was an attempt to bully and silence parents into submission, but thankfully their plan backfired. It's only emboldened parents to push back even harder. And so the parent revolution is a story about uh, what they did, the dark times of COVID and how they tried to silence parents. But it's a story of hope, too, in that it shows that when parents lock arms and band together, they can become an even more powerful union than the teachers, one for the kids. They care about their children more than anybody else, and they outnumber the employees in the system. So after that letter was sent by the NSBA, guess what? 26 states have already left the National School Boards Association. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. And they're also, they've tried to cut off families' mics at school board meetings too. And so parents rightly understood that, hey, I should be able to take my money somewhere else so that next time I'll have more leverage in that conversation. If you can vote with your feet, the school boards will have an incentive to listen to you, to care about you. And maybe they would have been open throughout the pandemic era, like the private schools, private daycares, private businesses. In fact, in Sacramento, in California, they had a stupid health care health order that closed schools arbitrarily, but not daycare centers. Because COVID was smart. It knew that if you were learning, it would activate and get you. But if you were in the same building and nothing was going on, somehow you were okay. It was really courteous of a virus too, because on airplanes, it, it knew. When you were eating and you had your mask down, it was never going to get you because it was going to let you take your time and eat. But that's a, another conversation altogether. In California, there was a private school, a Christian school, that understood this lunacy of the lockdowns, and they rebranded themselves as a daycare. They retrained all their employees as daycare workers and so that they could open their doors for their customers. That just goes to show you the incentives are all out of whack with the government school system. I, I like the way you put it in, in, in the books. I, I hear you saying they're customers, and that is the way you put it in the books. Like, imagine if you had to uh, move to a different place to go to a different to, to go to a different restaurant, right? If there's only one restaurant in your uh, in your community, and you didn't like the food, and they didn't care because that's the only show in town. So it's a very interesting point that you make, and of course, this is what. You know, th th this is what our uh, system is based on. It's based on it's based on choice. It's based on opportunity. And, and that's how people make money by offering choices. And that's what makes things better. Right. By having competition.
That's right. And look, if you were assigned to a government grocery store, they might have empty shelves like we see in socialist countries. If they did have food, it probably would be expired. You'd get food poisoning. And if you wanted to go somewhere else, imagine if you had to pick up all your bags and move houses to be assigned to another government grocery store. That would make no sense. It would cause a lot of monopoly power and it would be horrible for customers. And guess what the government grocery stores would say? They'd say, I know we've increased funding by 170%. You yeah, just need right. more money. This It's the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. But uh, look, as I show in the parent revolution, the parents are fed up. And I think this is the best solution to the curriculum battles too, because the problem is that we assign millions of families to a one-size-fits-all system that by definition is never going to meet the needs of various families that just disagree about how they want to raise their children. It's okay to disagree about these things. What's not okay is you have a special interest, the teachers unions, radical progressives that control the school system and mold the minds of other people's children. They don't want to lose their monopoly on funding, but more importantly, they don't want to lose the monopoly on the minds of other people's kids because they know this is look, this is they fight school choice harder than anything else. I mean, let, let's be real, even with the with banning of divisive concepts in public schools, which I think is a step in the right direction, the unions don't fight that as hard because they know they can get around it. And we have found in states like my home state of Texas, other red states that have banned critical race theory, for example, that we have undercover video from accuracy and media finding public school administrators on camera being exposed saying that even if critical race theory is banned, they're going to do it anyway. They'll just call it social emotional learning. They'll call it student mental health services. It's a never ending game of whack-a-mole because they can move the goalposts every step of the way. And they do. And even if it's not explicitly in the curriculum, the Marxist ideology can still be taught through that lens in other areas. So it's a huge problem. The best solution, not the only solution, but the best solution is for families to be able to say, hey, I'm getting a whiff of this happening with the classroom. My student's telling me about this. My child's telling me about this. I'm gonna take my money that's meant for my child to a private school that aligns with their values or maybe even another public school that's doing a better job. And as you said, with competition, it's a rising tide that lifts all boats. If families have a say in their kids' education, the public schools shape up fast. 26 of 29 studies find positive effects of school choice competition on the outcomes in the public schools. It's, it's a win-win solution. I like very much how you talk about how you, uh, when you were a student, your school was terrible and then you had an opportunity. I mean, the, the, the stories are pretty funny. And I, I, again, I, I highly recommend our audience goes out and gets uh, The Parent Revolution and reads it as well. Importantly, buy it, but read it as well. The stories are funny, but very telling. And you and your parents made the choice to move to a charter school, and that became your career path. Um, Corey, we have to take a quick break. Uh, viewers, if you're watching on YouTube, please, we're going to Epoch TV exclusively. We're going to a quick break, less than a minute. We're going to cut away. We're going to come back with Corey DeAngelis, author of The Parent Revolution. And when we do come back, Corey, I want to ask you the kinds of things that parents are actually choosing. What are the things between uh, different private schools, charter schools, uh, all, all, uh, alternate public schools, and also homeschooling? I want to know what people are choosing. Mm -hmm. So does our audience. Audience. Make sure you make the jump to Epoch TV. We'll see you in about a minute. If you send your children off to Caesar to be educated, don't be surprised if they come back Romans. If you sit your children in front of TikTok and Instagram and uh, Facebook and whatever else, don't be surprised when your, come, your children come back uh, distrustful of your faith, of the concept of family, uh, hating the nation that you live in, and, and, and a whole host of other things that defy truth and beauty and goodness. After all, God gives children to parents, not to iPods uh, or iPads, and not to government institutions or even churches. So let's tell our kids the stories and the parables that produce blessing and protection and character. We need to start on our knees and make sure that we're the ones who are the primary storytellers in our children's lives. I am hoping, together with Brave Books, to make the new Mr. Rogers neighborhood. Think timeless, classic, 
moral values embedded in lessons that children will uh, benefit from today, only greatly modernized with high energy, hilarious dialogue, beautiful animated stories about the sacredness of life, about the First and Second Amendment, about the dangers of socialism, about love, kindness, joy, and peace, about humility, about telling the truth and discerning error from uh, reality in news headlines. Watch us exclusively on Epoch TV and uh, get the rest of this great conversation with the great Kirk Cameron. Thank you so much.